Hello, everyone, and welcome to Office Hours. My name is Jeff Blankenberg, and as we do every week, we're here to answer your questions about Alexa skill development and ambient computing and smart home and just everything else you can imagine. Uh, before we get started, I have some great guests. We're going to talk about the Alexa Learning Lab uh, and a number of other subjects, but I want to leave you with a couple of announcements before we get started. The first is that our February Tech Talk is coming up on February 22nd. This month, I get to speak with Pranav Rai, who is the principal product manager on the Alexa Skills Kit team. And he'll be discussing the skill quality coach. And we'll have more details on that to come, but for now, save the date, February 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific. Speaking of skill quality coach, by the way, for the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing an insight from the skill quality coach. There are lots and lots of different tips and ideas it can give you for how to improve your skill. And this week, I wanted to tell you about the insight from our certification team, which is really, really important. We want to be able to make it easy for you to help customers find your skill quickly by adding the most relevant words that best describe your skill and its core functionality in the keywords section. If you guys haven't played with the keywords that uh, are part of the metadata that you submit with your skill, this is a really important aspect that a lot of people overlook or completely skip. And one of the things that you can do there is make sure that people that are searching for your skill, skills like your skill, uh, and anything else that kind of falls in the vein of what you're trying to accomplish, but maybe you don't mention that word in your title or in your description, using that keyword section can go a long way in improving the findability of your skill. And when you have search terms, separate them by spaces or commas between each term. Uh, it's a really powerful tool for making sure people can find your software, and I can't recommend it enough. All right. The last thing is we're going to have senior uh, VUI designer, if you guys haven't heard the term VUI, it's voice user interface. Allison Atwell, a good friend of mine, is going to be on the show to discuss the Alexa design guide. It's going to be a great conversation, so I'm really looking forward to it. Same day and time, next week, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. <clears throat> okay. Those are my announcements for today. Actually, I, I lied. I have one more. Um, for those of you that aren't currently in our Slack community, something happened yesterday that I thought was pretty amazing, and I wanted to share the story with all of you to encourage you, if you're not already in Slack, to check it out. Uh, first, you can find Slack at alexa.design slash Slack. But the, the story that I want to tell you is that a few developers noticed yesterday that there was an error message that they were getting as they were trying to build their models in, uh, in their Alexa skills. I had also noticed this on Friday during one of my live streams, and I wasn't sure what was going on, and it seemed to stop, so I didn't bother reporting it or, or escalating it. But I noticed it happened again on Monday, and a few of our teammates that are on the product team saw these messages happening in Slack. They went and looked at what was going on. They found the error, they fixed the error, and deployed the change the same night. And so just by having a conversation and talking about what their experiences were inside Slack, we actually identified and fixed an error in under 24 hours, which I thought was just incredible. So that being said, if you're not already in Slack, I can't recommend it enough. There's so many good things happening there. In addition to talking to folks on the product team, you're talking with lots of developers that are building all sorts of interesting things for Alexa. All right. That is my monologue. Let's get on to bringing some guests on screen here. I have Santosh and Kabila and Amanda. Thank you guys so much for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you, Jeff. Certainly. Thank you, Jeff. It's um, great to be here. So uh, Santosh and Kabila, you guys work directly on the Alexa Learning Lab. And before That's I get great. into my litany of questions that I have for you about all of that, uh, you know, let's, let's start with Kabila. I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Tell me what you do on the team. And then Santosh, let's have you do the same. Great. So my name is Kabila Williams. I'm a seven-year Amazonian, and I am in charge of uh, developing the curriculum, expanding the curriculum, and courses to help the develop developer community uh, learn new skills as things, new features are launched, um, and to uh, you know help them expand their skill sets. Santosh. Awesome. Thanks, Kabila. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Santosh Gara. I'm the product manager on the Alexa Learning Lab. Um, in my role, uh, I enable technical curriculum developers like Kabila to go and develop courses, um, you know, the, uh, the for you. Um, and my uh, job is to equip, you know, the, my technical curriculum developers with the tools and the techniques that are required for them to bring those, you know, uh, learning materials to you so you can learn, you know, faster and quicker. Um, so I'm just, uh, there. that's my role. Awesome. So I know we launched uh, the Learning Lab uh, with initially with the APL Learning Path. Can you tell me some of the improvements you've been making based on developer feedback and a lot of the data that that has generated? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I think when we launched uh, the API Learning Path back in July 2022, uh, there were about three courses. Um, and I, soon after we launched, there were about um, approximately about 1,000 you know, Alexa developers who took these trainings um, and we and they provided feedback as well, right? And apart from the feedback, we were also collecting data in terms of how they're learning. Um, you know, all of this data is completely anonymous. Um, our more interest was to learn, you know, how they're now the learning. And we learned a lot of things. And the top three, if I have to mention, were one, we learned that the developer community really loved the ability to practice. You know, the, if people have already gone to the Alexa Learning Lab, you'll see there's a little coding editor in there. You can make changes to your code, um, submit it, get feedback on your written code, um, you know, and progress from there on. So they loved the ability to practice there. What they did not like was that courses were too wordy. It, it lacked, uh, you know, interactivity, videos. And we are, they also did not like that we ramped up to, you know, concepts too fast in uh, certain cases. Um, and finally, you know, there were some, probably we've added some, you know, friction around assessments where they did not like the assessments that we, you know, put in there. Either they were too lengthy or it was too confusing. Um, so internally, we made a choice uh, to go and update the courses. Um, if you look at the new update courses, there are about five courses now in the learning path. Uh, we reduced the number of content that they had to read. Uh, we have made it really, you know, nimble for them to digest as well as the practice. We added more practice sessions and we completely moved away from, you know, uh, mandatory assessment, like, you know, giving you tests or anything such, you know, uh, for you to, you know, progress to the course there. So we Got put it. more so, emphasis. So that, bas that basically allows, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, that basically allows developers to jump around and work on the things that they care about without forcing them to run through testing gates and things Absolutely. like that. Right? Absolutely, cool. Jeff. I think we should actually go to the demo. You have a demo prepared, right? That might be a good opportunity to show everybody what it looks like and how it works and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm and happy to- Yeah, we should also drop the link in the chat to the lab if we've got that too. Sure, so I can now show the demo, um, no problem. Let me know when you all can see my screen. Oh, I can. We're good. Excellent, so I'm inside of course four of the Alexa Learning Lab. Oh, Camila, I'm not I apologize. seeing the score. I'm seeing, I'm your, seeing desktop. your desktop. Oh, okay. Sorry. Open up I here. moved it slightly. Here we go. There we go. Oh, right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome. So, thank you for call, that call out. So, we are now in course four of the Alexa Learning Lab. And uh, I'll start at the bottom here, at the top here, actually. This particular lesson is about the Alexa icon mm -hmm. button, which is an awesome feature if you've ever developed an Alexa um, skill before. Uh, you can add interactivity to the button, um, but we're going to get down to the activity, which is actually adding two buttons. As you see in the exemplar graphic here, there's a down button and it will be an up button or up arrow that I'll be adding right now. So uh, the instructions you'll find for each practice opportunity within each course, uh, the instructions will be laid out for you. Um, and we try to optimize these instructions to make sure that they're not too verbose, right? We want to make sure you, we're giving you the details that you need to be able to successfully pass the, te the tests that our developers, our SDEs have worked to code on the back end. So uh, first we're gonna add a uh, down arrow before the next guest text component. So I'm gonna go to the code sandbox and find the next guest text component, which starts on line 47, as you can see, really on 46. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that there. And you will see that I now have the down arrow, which is also shown in the photo here. The last part of this actual assessment is to add the upward facing arrow and the instructions clearly tell you to do so after the next guest test component. So now I will scroll down to where I'm at a point after the next guest test component and I will go ahead and submit that code and voila, there we have the upward facing arrow. Okay, fantastic. And as you navigate through the rest of this course, you will find out how to add an action to these buttons that you just added to your screen. Um, one of the great deals, uh, or one of the great parts about the Code Sandbox, which Santosh mentioned um, not long ago, is that it allows you to get that hands-on practice that developers have requested. You get to come in here and actually write code and see real-time real -time, uh, uh, feedback. Notice I didn't like that. You see the red X here? I have to go ahead and remove that, so I will. Then I will submit my the code that I've written before, and I will see the feedback that I get. Notice that I passed the validation text That's awesome. here, and you get some detailed information to help you in case you did not do it uh, correctly. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Very cool. 
Yeah, I, I think that's one of the, the biggest pluses to this tool is that it's not just like running code in your own developer editor or anything like that. Like you're actually being able to play with this code here mm -hmm. and then you get to see it change and you can run tests against it to make sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Fantastic. Correct. Absolutely. Suppose I forgot to add the bottom, the, the upward facing button. Let me just go ahead and remove it really quickly. I'm um, Samson, so I think you were going to say something. Feel free to, to speak to you. All right. Good. Suppose I took, uh, I'm just going to remove the uh, downward facing arrow. And I'm going to run the test by submitting. And notice the feedback should be helpful. We work very hard to make sure that it's constructive feedback that you receive so that you know how to go and correct course. So the items listed here, we should have, should contain three components, two Alexa buttons and a text component. Have you added both buttons to the container counter, the counter container? And as you see, I only have one here. So now I need to go back and add that back. And the comma. That's great. And there we are. Thank you. Yes, thank you. In the event that you get stuck, you can always show answer and you'll get the correct uh, response. Cool. Oh, does it, so does it fill the editor in with the appropriate code then? Correct. Nice. So suppose I, suppose I, uh, you know, completely messed this up and, you know, I'm running out of time. I've got things to, to run off to, but I want to see the correct answer. I can simply select show answer button and it asks me, do I want to see the answer? Because anything that I've typed in the code sandbox will be lost after I reveal the answer. And I can say yes. And it shows me the proper answer. Yeah, so cool. and this feature was recently introduced based on our developer feedback because many of the developers mm -hmm. told us that, hey, I couldn't solve it, but tell me what is you know the, what is the final answer, right? So now Correct. here is a way. Just so click Correct. on the show answer and you can view the answers uh, for those practice sessions there. Correct. There's uh, uh, various tabs and also you can reset it. I know that's uh, when you play around with it, sometimes you're like, oh goodness, what did I add? What did I remove? Let me reset it so I'm starting from scratch again, um, and then. When you are finished, once you if you decide to show the answer, you can actually copy the code and take it off with you. Cool. Very cool. Uh, this this is just this is the right way to learn, uh, where you're getting your hands dirty, you're playing with it, you're not just reading a doc or or trying to understand a concept. You actually get to try it. This is great. Absolutely, I like that you can experiment, and if something breaks, no big deal. Just click no clear and start over and. That's, it makes yeah. it that makes learning easy because you don't have to worry about you know breaking something yeah very good point amanda i think um to jeff's points earlier and you don't have to set up the skills you don't have to have any skill running and be at this point to start you know trying this feature out right you can jump right in and start practicing writing apl docs here um absolutely awesome so your focus right now you have a lot of apl courses i know is that the primary focus mm -hmm. that's in there and like Tell us a little bit about what's coming next. I know, but tell the audience a little bit about what you're working on right now. Yes, um, no, great question. Our focus has been um, APL. Uh, there is, I think we are planning to launch additional courses uh, on the APL learning path as well. But in addition, um, if you truly say uh, where we want to be, we want to be at a place where we want to enable developers how to build any you know, Alexa skills, right? Um, mm -hmm. So in order to make that happen, Apart from APL, we're also looking at some of the high friction areas. Where are our developers struggling? And listening to our you know, developers through other, like you know, the voice of the developer survey in the far, far and few of the training requests that we've been receiving. And we recently we've learned that we identified few areas, like certification is one such, right? Um, that we have a, we have learned that certification has been some of the you know most stressful points for our developers out there. So we're working on getting started. Uh, we're working on a course to uh, help developers learn or be transparent about what does certification entail? Um, what are the checks that we do? You know, and what are the top failures, reasons, and how they, what actions they could take today in order to fix them out on their scale, right? So that's in the works. Uh, we hope to release that sometime um, you know, early uh, this quarter. Um, and out, outside of that, we're also working on some of the new uh, getting started courses, which is mainly targeting, um, you know, the new developers who want to learn how to get started on how, learning how to build electric skills. So those are some courses that um, we're working on in parallel. Nice. I, I think that's always a good angle to take also, right? If, if you provide a bunch of getting started resources, even developers that have a lot of experience or knowledge, um, by taking those kinds of things, there's often little nuggets that they can glean. They're like, oh, you know what? I actually didn't realize that worked that way, or I've never tried solving the problem in that direction. 
Uh, and so I recommend even for, you know, folks like me that have been doing this for years and years, there's always something new to learn. And so even though it's labeled getting started or, or beginner path, I think those kinds of things still go a long Absolutely. way in educating me how to, how to use the technology. Yeah. And if you have certain, you know, recommendations for us and we're all, you know, open to listening and taking your feedback, you know, feel free to, you know, send us your training training request. I think uh, we have dropped the link here. Um, either, you know, uh, it's a short survey. Uh, feel free just to, you know, tell us what you want and we can prioritize them you know, during the upcoming months. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question is if, the, if there are things that developers want a course like this to learn, how do they do that? Do we do we have a link? Um yeah, that people can go to to fill that out. In the chat there. Cool, perfect. Yeah. So, Correct. what's your mission as a team? Like, what do you really hope to achieve for developers? What's your overall primary mission with Lex Learning Lab? Um, so, with Alexa Learning Lab, our mission was to develop, um, was come up with an e-learning solution, um, you know, that can enable our developers to learn and practice, right? Uh, without having to leave the e-learning solution and go to their and switch between, you know, like their um, developer in my, in my, and come back and, you know, have a very, uh, you know, like a disjointed learning. So our mission was how can I help or to help them learn quicker, faster, um, in the most easiest uh, and, and make it easier and fast for learn so they can learn what and have fun while building skills, right? So that's our, that was our mission. That was, we set out, um, you know, and we want, we want developers to go learn quickly and have fun building out the skills and not struggle to find uh, the resources. That's where we want to be. And 100%. We also want to make sure, um, Central Suisse is a great point about making sure that our developer community has a location where they can go, a trusted location, I should call out, where they know the content that's provided there is reliable, valid, and will can be used to help move them forward, right? So as you're wanting to do something, if you want to add, like I just showed a button, to a screen if you have for devices with screens, right? Alexa enabled devices with screens. You can come here and take this module within course four. If you want to continue learning, continue to progress through the course, and we we up the ante a little bit, we, we teach you how to add an action to that button. So once the user presses the button, what should happen? We walk you through this process, okay? And this is why we are always listening to our developer community because we want to help you as best we can. So definitely provide that feedback to us. I, you know, we're very passionate about learning. We're very passionate about bringing you the bet a high quality content that will help to unblock you if you're blocked, or to help you expand your skill set if that's what your goal is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good lesson for for everybody. But it's it, there's almost a little irony in thinking about the fact that the two of you are so focused on delivering learning resources to developers. And in order to do so, you yourselves need to do so much learning about those developers and what they need, and what they want. It's a, it's a nice fortuitous circle that comes all the way around. Absolutely, yeah. And it's been a great learning to uh, hear, Jeff, because when we start off with the path, you know, we took our best educated guess about you know what developers want. We put them out there, and now we're listening to the feedback and uh, the data. We're looking at the data, and we're in, and we're optimizing the courses for them. Cool. Yeah, so, so that actually leads me to my last question. I, I knew you guys were working on this kind of beginner getting started uh, new course. Is there anything you can tell us specifically about it? Like what are the kinds of topics that developers might expect to see in there? Yeah, I'm working um, on this too. <laughs> Go ahead, Sintosh. Awesome, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think um, as I mentioned before, um, we're looking at uh, friction areas, high friction areas, and we're also looking at um, enabling our new developers to quickly start um, and onboard on how to develop Alexa scale, right? Uh, so we're developing a few courses where we start off with they start off with uh, orienting them, giving them with the, some of the basic foundational knowledge required to build, you know, Alexa skills, and quickly from there on transitioning them to, um, you know, building the skill on their own, a very simplistic, uh, you know, skill, and then um, you know, ramp up on the complexity of those other skills there. So that's a course that we were currently working on. Um, Amanda, do you want to add more? Yeah, um, I just want to say like at least my thought process here um, and some of the vision that I was thinking is like some people don't know what skill they want to build and they're in kind of the ideation phase and they're trying to figure out like how to even skills work and what would be the fun thing to do. And there's a whole orientation course that we're making that's mm -hmm. sort of a, this is what a skill is. Here's how it's put together. Here's how to come up with ideas that might be the right skill for you to build. And just like using your, using your imagination and walking through those processes. 
other developers, they know what they want to make. They want to get started right away. They want to go right into the code. So the second course is more of a, this is your basic simple skill to get started making your first skill if you've never made a skill before. Um, and in that case, like maybe you already know how to code or maybe you want to cut and paste code, it's fine. But if you know you want to start coding, uh, it's good to have that sandbox right away to start playing with it. So that was sort of the, the so there's sort of two getting started courses, depending on what your path is. You can do both, of course. And even if you are interested in jumping in and coding right away, you might find some of the stuff in orientation just kind of opens up your imagination a little bit with other possibilities <clears throat> that you hadn't considered. So it's, basically, it's there if you need it. And if you don't, you can move right into the getting started coding part of the awesome. tutorials. That's great. Uh, well, I'm sure we're going to continue talking about this, but now is about the time in the broadcast where I like to start jumping into some of the questions to see what folks have to say. And so we've got uh, we've got a few common faces here: Brian Tarbox, Kevin Evans, Habuma, Gavin Watson, Jawwork, A Witters. They're all here, uh, yes. saying hi and, and checking in. Uh, Trey Last is here as well. Uh, Soundmaster AJ said uh, on Twitch that um, uh, for, for, I guess I should take a little backstory on this. For those of you that don't know, uh, most mornings, uh, usually around 9 a.m. Eastern time, I'm, I'm doing about an hour, hour and a half of live coding. I'm working on a very big skill um, that I'll be launching later this year, but um, I'm doing all of the development live on camera. And so if you guys want to tune in and see what I'm building, how I'm building it, uh, and ask any questions, you're more than welcome to. And, and Soundmaster was basically just saying that uh, he watched it this morning and he's tuning in for everyone. It's making a big difference for how he thinks about building skills and that, you know, one, that's incredibly flattering. Thank you for saying that. Uh, but two, if you're looking for more opportunities to learn or consume some of this stuff, um, I'm actually broadcasting that on my own channel. So you can find me on Twitch uh, at the username that you see here on the screen. Um, but I'd love to have more of you there. We have a great conversation every morning and it's uh, it's a lot of fun for me. So if you guys want, want to join me, please do. Um, Kevin Evans also said that uh, re referencing when I was mentioning Allison Atwell will be here next week. He said, Allison always has some great info to share. Totally agree. Uh, I, I wish I could just like crack her brain open and just take everything out because she is absolutely brilliant when it comes to this stuff. And every time I talk to her, I learn some some new things. Um, we have shared links to the learning lab. So that's good. People, people were really excited about that. So Camila and Santos, people are looking forward to getting into the learning lab. Hopefully we'll see some new traffic today. That's always good. Absolutely. Amazing. Brian Tarbox also mentioned, uh, and Kabila and Santosh, I don't know if you've seen this, but we have a, an Alexa champion. His name is Mark Tucker. And a little while ago, he created a 15-part video series on YouTube about APL. Uh, I've been through a few of the videos, and they're they're excellent. Yep. He really is quite knowledgeable. And so for folks that are looking for a deeper dive on APL, that might be another thing to check out. Absolutely. Um, ooh, tough question you. here, um, Santosh. I don't know if you saw this. We had a, a question that came to you privately behind the scenes. Um, I'll let you think about yes or no on that question before I ask you it publicly, but we'll uh, we'll keep moving here. And then um, Brian Tarbox mentioned that he'd love to see a page that lists the features that are in preview, like developer preview, those kinds of things, and any hints about what the schedule might be for those things. Uh, the schedule part might be harder to deliver, uh, but Brian, I agree with you. I think that maybe that's a conversation we could have. Um, as part of our Alexa Live discussions, maybe starting at Alexa Live, we could have a page that kind of really talks about a bit of the roadmap, or at least things that we've announced or pre-released or beta tested or whatever sta status it happens to be in. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. Okay, getting back to the question at hand, can I share Santosh's email address publicly on the internet? Here we go. Someone asked if they could have <laughs> Santosh's email address, and he has kindly been willing Absolutely. to do that. So his email address is S-H-A-N-K-R-G at Amazon.com. Uh, Santosh, I've shared my email address here dozens, if not hundreds of times, and I get a couple emails a month. It's, uh, it's the people are very kind and understanding with our time. So um, it's S-H-A-N-K-R-G at Amazon.com. Okay. So if you want to get a hold of Santosh, that's, that's the way to do it. Um, so Kevin Evans said, Amanda just said copying and pasting of code is just fine. I saw that comment. Thank you for validating my entire coding career. Listen, <laughs> it's a learning sandbox. You're just learning 
It copy is. paste the code if you don't understand it see how it works play with it delete two lines mm -hmm. this is the perfect time the perfect atmosphere uh, maybe don't you know experiment with that on your live build of something that's already working but the learning sure. sandbox that's exactly where you know i cut and paste code when i'm starting out and then yep. when i'm comfortable i'm type i'm typing it all out but you don't uh, you don't just test in production just slap some stuff in there and ship it yeah you know you, it, it, there's different pipelines for different methods right. right but all i mean it's a perfect time yeah. to make no, and, and that's and true for worry. me too you'll even see this uh for those of that had an opportunity to watch me code <laughs> is that more often than not i've already written the thing i want and i just need to massage or change it a little bit and so very frequently when i'm creating a new module inside my skill i'm just going to be like this one's kind of like what i need and i'll save that as the new file and then i just make a few changes to it rather than rewriting yeah. that whole thing from scratch i guess i'm copying and pasting from myself but still, it's a uh, it's a time saver for sure. Visual Studio Code yeah. has that useful yeah. thing where you can select multiple lines and type the same thing out multiple type times. Very Love convenient. That <laughs> Love that feature. Uh, all right, it looks like we've made it to the bottom. Uh, Nima Kevin said you could have uh, use copy paste or have ChatGPT just write the code for you. Uh, I'll, I'll give my quick little monologue on ChatGPT. One, I think it's awesome and it does a number of things amazingly well. Um, but if you take a look at the code that it writes, you should be able to understand what it's writing for you because in many cases it's close, but it's not uh, it's not a full thing. For example, um, you can ask it to write you an Alexa skill that does something. And what it will do is write you the framework with only one intent, which happens to be the intent that does the thing you asked it to do, but none of the other supporting code that's necessary to be able to accomplish that. So I think it's good. And I think the ChatGPT has a lot of promise, especially in our arenas. Um, I have it write content for me all the time. Uh, when I think about sample utterances and all the other content that I need to generate to build a great skill, ChatGPT is great for that. Um, but uh, I think be careful when you're relying on it to write things like code, code for you. If I copy paste code and I don't understand how it works, I know I'm setting myself up for a bad time later on yeah. down the line. <laughs> I'm going to have to actually figure out how it works later. I know that I not that I would ever do that, but I'm no. sure I have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean that's that's part of learning too, right? I mean, my learning process for any new platform framework, whatever, is that I find a working example and I tear it apart. Like, what happens if I remove this line? What does that do? Or how does this thing? What does this affect? And the only really way, real way to know is to comment that line out or see, you know, what what's going to happen if it's not obvious to me just in the context. Um, all right, so I, I think I've gotten to the bottom of the comments, which is pretty good. Um, uh, Santosh, I'd love to know this. I think this would be insightful for folks. We initially mm -hmm. launched the APL course, um, and like you said, you had some um, you had some mandatory tests that you had to pass to move from module to module, and there were some other things that were in there. What were the what were the biggest changes that you guys made that have uh, that are now part of the the new version of the Alexa Learning Lab? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Um, specifically focusing on the practice sessions there, um, like when you saw the demo, Kabila did show you the coding sandbox where you could write the code, right? We read we um, purposefully kept those practice sessions to be, you know. Um, something that's solvable within the probably, you know, doesn't take more than 10 to 20 minutes to solve, uh, you know, and practice that, right? Um, in right. the earlier courses, there were some uh, topics which were really lengthy, uh, if you've gone through them, and it took really about an hour for you to go really, you know, get a screen uh, built out. But what we have done really now is we have a skill behind the scenes where it sets you up to get you to a stage where you need to practice. And now you're just practicing, you know, either adding of those buttons or the, so you can really get it done quickly in the maximum of, you know, 10 minutes there. So that was yeah. one of the major changes. Uh, second, you also saw Kabila at the end of it, she submitted, she wrote a code and she clicked on the submit and she got the feedback, right? Whether the feedback was right or, you know, yeah, yeah right here, yeah, the submission feedback. Um, the, the feedback that we really heard from our developers was sometimes the feedback was vague saying that it failed, you not find it. So, so we made it, we took really a strides to, you know, give really meaningful feedback and also help the developer saying clearly communicate, Hey, where he has gone wrong and what step he has to take in order to address that problem. Right. So we made, um, you know, strides in order to you know, make it simple and easy to, uh, organize some of those other feedbacks out there. That's great. That's yeah, great. I, I, think, I think you're really hitting it on the head, though. People want kind of small, snackable tasks that they can jump in and understand. 
because uh, sometimes we don't all have an hour that de- we can dedicate to this stuff. But I have I have 15 minutes between meetings. I'd like to keep going on this course. This is this is a great strategy, I think. Right. Yeah, so if I close I'd, this, it picks right back up where I left off. Right. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So that so Jeff, you make you make a very good, good point there. Um, we wanted to make sure when we we built out this particular course, right? We were very selective about what to be what to be include what should be included and what should be excluded, not to expand it, right? Because when you when you try to include every single thing, it becomes overwhelming right. very quickly. Yeah. As we discovered the first time we tried to launch a set of courses, right? We found. We heard from the developer community that it was a little too much. The cognitive load or lift, if you will, was a little too high. So we we optimized it by bringing it down slightly. We reconstructed our instructions. Again, they were a little too verbose, verbose initially. So we had to pare those down. Um, and yeah, we just continue to make improvements. So again, I'm going to ask if you have any request, please do not hesitate or be shy about reaching out to us to let us know because we are listening to you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, and uh, Jeff, to finally conclude, the one of the things that we have not... So this is about the coding sandbox, right? Now, if you look at the course, the, I think Kabila has gone through and updated the entire course to make it easier to follow. What I mean by that is, you know, if you look at the code, the new courses, the optimized courses, you'll see a hey, concept that we introduce. Then you'll see practice session to immediately practice those you know, concepts, and you move on to the simpler. So I think she's ramping up in a very nice controlled fashion, where you you know really you know incrementally learn and progressively learn and you know uh, and how to, and practice them along the way as well. So we made those uh, the changes to the content as well. Correct, and we all know that as uh, we've mentioned a couple times in this call, um, developers will learn best by tactile learning, right? The hands-on keyboard learning. This yep. code sandbox is the safest environment for you to just literally get in here, play around with it, experiment. Like Jeff said, it, it work, you know, show the answer, see what the exemplary response is, mm-hmm. take a line of code out, see what happens when you submit it again. If you have any, uh, any I wanna see what, what happens if I add this, add it and see what happens, run submit and see what, what it yields. Um, if you want to add a hint to the user, um, practice doing that. Uh, there are sections throughout each of these courses where you have that opportunity. And we we actually do call it out. Like, try moving this. Try changing the viewport to see how it renders on a different a different device. For example, this is the hub landscape medium right now is what's shown. If I were to come to this drop-down menu, I could actually select the hub round small and see what that looks like. Okay, so get in here and experiment with this code toolbox, this uh, code sandbox, excuse me, it's a great tool that we've created for you to play around with and experiment. Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. I love my little echo spot, the, the rounded screen one, um, mm-hmm. but so few developers actually build with that screen in mind. Mm-hmm. Not very often you encounter a device that has a round screen, but um, it, it is a cool little device. And I, I feel like I wish, you know, this this makes it easy for people to come in and see like, Oh, this isn't actually going to render very well at all. I should tweak this or change this a little bit. Correct. Mm-hmm. And they can obviously see all of this same stuff. This looks very similar, if not identical, to the simulator. But it's uh, it's nice to know that as I'm doing the training, that I have access to all of those same tools uh, that I had available um, in the simulator. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. All right. Uh, a few more questions have come in. Uh, Chuck Phelps says. Uh, oh, Chuck Phelps says it's a great place to play around. I dove into the learning lab first, and then I used the video series by Mark Tucker as well. So that's great, Chuck. Um, Joel Work wanted to know why he didn't get an email prompt about today's stream. I can um, take that and I know that uh, our team behind the scenes kind of replied to that, but I, I don't believe that we are sending dedicated emails out, although we it is don't. possible that uh, you're asking on Twitch. I think Twitch does send emails Twitch does. generally. Yeah, if you're subscribed on Twitch and you have your notifications selected, you should get an email. I'm seeing some people saying they didn't get it today. I'm also subscribed on Twitch, so I'll check, or not subscribed, but followed on Twitch. I usually get the email, so I'll check and see if I got one, but I, I don't want to be messing with my email while I'm on camera. Right. So I'll yeah. check and see for y'all, but maybe it ended up in your spam folder this week, or maybe they didn't get sent out, but those are automated emails sent by Twitch. So for those of you that didn't get one, yeah, a Twitch. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking through my, my email, and I'm not finding anything from uh, from Twitch today. That's very odd. 
Hmm. Uh, but good to Twitch know. Issue. Um, and that, that's a good reminder for all of you, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch or anywhere else. Uh, in most cases, you can sign up for uh, basically to subscribe to the channel so that you know when new content is coming out. Um, and they will send you a notification uh, on your phone or in an email. So it's a good way to know about what's happening and when so that you can pay attention. So, all right. Um, oh, we've got a good one here from Soundmaster AJ. So the question is, um, I need some advice. I need to cap my S3 costs ASAP since my skill streams a short audio file that perpetually loops. I'm assuming, uh, Soundmaster, that you're talking about something like a, like a pink noise or some kind of ambient sound that would loop regularly. And you believe the only verified safe path you have is to replace that short audio file with a long version and then fade it out um, at skill end with no, as the sound ends, I think that's what you mean, like fade it in and out and you just keep looping that longer sound. Oh, fade it out and the skill ends no looping. I wanted to implement a subscription at the same time as I added multi-locale support, but it's too complicated for me to figure out. Well, there's a, there's a few things to take away from this. One, I don't know that you're necessarily going to get a lot of savings from S3 from replacing a small file that loops with a large file that doesn't. Um, you're still pushing the same number of bits, realistically. Uh, my recommendation would be to look into something like CloudFront, um, some sort of content delivery network that's away from something like S3 that has significantly lower costs for pushing your files out um, in different locales. So that's one. Look into CloudFront. That would be where I would start. Number two... Um, you said that you're interested in, in implementing a subscription. Um, I'm going to pose a question they were not prepared for, but Santosh and Kabila, have we looked at doing anything uh, course-wise around in-skill purchasing? Um, yes, that's definitely not uh, the red art. So that's uh, also one of those courses that uh, is in work uh, about uh, teaching developers how they can monetize on the skills. Um, that's definitely in works, but I don't have a specific timeline on that. Um, oh, that's, a, that's okay. No timelines. I just wondered if that was a topic you'd considered. Uh, because it sounds yes, to me like yeah. you're saying it's pretty complicated to figure out. So it sounds like that's an opportunity for us to provide some learning opportunities. Absolutely. Opportunity for us to provide some learning opportunities. Jeff, get a bigger vocabulary. <laughs> okay. Um, and then finally, it was saying he was adding multi-locale support. Multi-locale support is also tricky. Um, I would, uh, Soundmaster, you can chat with me on uh, Slack. I'd be happy to show you how I kind of think about multi-locale support and having different strings for different languages and, and stuff like that. So um, if you have any questions uh, or want to get deeper into this, you can always find me on Slack. So please, please, please reach out. Uh, Dana Voice says, I got an email. Did you click the notify bell? Did it get unclicked somehow? So uh, what he's referring to is on Twitch. Um, you can follow someone, uh, but then there's also a notifications bell. And if you, if you highlight the bell, then it will um, make sure that you're getting those notifications. I think that that's only a YouTube thing. Is that also a Twitch thing, Amanda? Twitch will notify you. I don't know if it's it's a slightly different notification yeah. thing, but it's in there. YouTube is the one that has the notification bell. Um, <clears throat> okay. And there's some conversation about the looping audio solutions. Oh, good. Is that coming up? Yeah. Yeah, so A. Witter said, um, you can save a little by fronting your S3 audio via CloudFront, but the price savings is very small. Should help with your latency, though. Um, oh, I see. Soundmaster saying, if I just do one long file that just ends over time, then people can't live, loop it for 56 hours at a time. Yeah, that's that seems reasonable. Uh, you could also try to set some limits for yourself to just say, I'm not going to run for longer than four hours or eight hours. Maybe that's a a subscription level feature, right? If someone's paying you, then they can loop it for 56 hours, but otherwise there's a limit of two or something. Another another option to consider. Um, Brian Tarbox has a couple of other recommendations, I think, for courses he'd like to see. But of course, uh, as we provided the link earlier, please, if you can submit them through that form, that makes a lot more sense. Um, shopping actions, tasks, domain-free interactions, and uh, send to phone. Yeah, if you have course recommendations, we posted the forum earlier. Please send us our, send them our way. You know, I don't think we I think we have to prioritize how fast we get to them because we're you know we're working on it. But yep. we have that recommendations form, and if there's a there's a demand for a certain thing, we want to add more to, to that. So for sure. Yes, I agree. And I'd just like to add that um, as we are coming out and designing the learning paths, because there will be several of them. 
we want to make sure that we're meeting the learning needs of the entire developer community. So those who are, who might consider themselves pretty novice, such as myself, like I'm in a, in the process of developing like a first skill or those who have developed several skills. Like we want to make sure that we're meeting your needs, your learning needs. So definitely let us know if you would like to, you know, I heard ISP a few minutes ago, like certainly that's on the, that's coming down the pipeline. It's something that's on our radar. It's something that we've heard from the developer community specifically. And we want to develop a robust curriculum that helps you learn how to make in-store purchasing um, a part of your skill. Um, also, again, we, uh, as um, Amanda has mentioned, we have the um, the one-on-one courses coming up. So again, so we're going to meet the developers wherever you are and also in between, right? Those in the middle, we have not forgotten about you, of course. So developing a, a learning paths and a set of a set of courses to meet whatever the need is that you need. Yep. Yeah. I would also like to add, um, like to just to what Kabila said, it's not just the courses. As you, when you practice and use the courses, you come across uh, the idea saying, hey, I wish I had this, right? You come across any of those thoughts, feel free to, you know, send us those uh, through the training feedback as well. Um, you know, we'll be listening and we're happy to, you know, incorporate those there. Correct. Good, good. Uh, Benjamin Af Anderson offers some guidance on ChatGPT to create intent <laughs> phrases. One of the things that's very tempting is to give me a hundred different uh, sample utterances that I want to use for my intents. And uh, this is this is good guidance. I think we see this in the design guide uh, as well as in some of our other resources. But I, I generally recommend if you're building a new intent, that you have 10 to 12 sample utterances. Um, it's very easy to overdo it, but the more you add, the more potential you add for confusing uh, and adding, adding conflicts to your intents uh, where they may overlap. I actually did that this morning where I had some in, intent conflicts because they were just, um, they were expecting the same kinds of words. So good tip, don't overdo it, but uh, ChatGPT can generate some of that content for you if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so Sam Master said, this is exactly what I would like a learning lab for. In-skill purchasing for controlling media streaming with multi-locale support. That is a very specific use case, specific. Um, mm -hmm. but that's that's great feedback. Thank you, Sam Master. Um, oh, and Soundmaster is self-taught. He built his skill from scratch in Python and hasn't nice. actually even used the SDK. So that means you're Whoa. doing all, all of that JSON parsing on your own? That's hardcore. Uh, I'm proud of you. That's that's good work. But man, that, that makes things a lot harder. Um, startup uh, wants to confirm that we got your email address correct. Um, yes, the, the email address that was yes, provided, is. Startup, is the correct email address. Uh, Amazon limits everyone to only eight characters. Um, and because there are so many people here, sometimes you don't get a, an email address that looks exactly like your name. So I can assure you that is the correct email address. Uh, yes, some Esther says JSON for days. Yeah, there's no no shortage of JSON parsing in, in what you're doing if you're not using the SDK. And for those of you that may not have seen the SDK, the, like 98% of its functionality is parsing and generating JSON for you so that you don't have to do all that extra work. So um, Soundmaster likes a little bit of pain with his Python, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I made the same, like when I was first making my from scratch Python skill, I made the same mistake, like do I have to write all this JSON out? And then I realized that I didn't have to write all that JSON out and I could just right. go and like select this stuff, it's much easier. <laughs> yeah, now, now I call a couple of methods and I'm off and running. It's yeah, a, yeah. Great. Uh, all right, we, we have about 15 minutes left, uh, or at least that we could fill if we want to. Is there uh, is there anything else, Santosh and Kabila, that you guys wanted to share before we uh, put a bow on this episode? Yeah, um, I think we spoke about um, you know how we can receive the training requests. I think I just wanted to uh, emphasize and encourage people to you know go to the learning lab, you know uh, take some of those courses and provide us with uh, this video. What are the things that you liked, you did not like? We'd like to hear both positives, negatives, so we can continuously improve them um, and evolve this for other uh, the learners uh, as well. So. Very good. Um, and again, we, we can't emphasize this enough. We as a team, Amanda, Kabila, Santosh, uh, and a number of other folks that are that are here on our team, we uh, we are here for you. Um, you know that's the reason that Slack exists. It's the reason office hours exist. It's the reason that our contact us forums and forums and user voice and all of the other things that we have out there, all of those things are here to make a, make it easier for us to make your lives better. 
And so if there's anything that stands out to you, if you're having an issue, if you're solving a problem and you just can't figure out how to get around it, reach out to us. Um, now, again, if, if you're talking about something that it's potentially any developer could know, I always recommend starting with Slack. Uh, you've got thousands and thousands of people there that could potentially answer your question. But if you're stuck on something or you need Amazon's help to accomplish something, uh, I can't I can't tell you enough that like, please come to us, please fill out a contact us form, please escalate it on, on Slack or through um, a number of the other avenues that we've provided. Uh, I think it, it goes a long way in making it better for everyone uh, because we start to understand problems developers are facing or educational opportunities that we might be able to provide, video content that we could produce. Um, it goes on and on. And so uh, if we don't know, if we don't hear from you, if we don't know the, the things that you're running into, the walls that you're facing, uh, or the challenges that you're having in building something, uh, we, we can't solve them. And so uh, more than anything, Amazon is a very customer-centric company. And uh, you all of you are here so that we can serve you, basically. So let us know how we can do that. Would really appreciate it. So... I know about the one on one course. It's close to close to me, but isn't there anything else you want to give us like a sneak peek about what might be coming this year? Or do we have to what what else do you think might be in your plans? Um so the so I think um we spoke a little bit about the certification courses. I think um we're looking at the areas where developers are, you know, are facing issues. And one of the things we learned was certification. So, you know, certification is definitely one of those uh, areas that we're working on. It's not just we're targeting one course, but we're thinking about uh, maybe, you know, uh, just like a learning path, just like uh, the APL, right? Because oh. when developers go through certification, there's a number of checks um, that we do in terms of there's a functional check, the security and the policy checks that we do. I think we're getting, we're driving into uh, providing them with more transparency around what are the checks we do so that they can, you know, self, uh, uh, they become self affair and make those right decisions while developing those skills um, there. So that's definitely one of those the learning path. The second I already hinted about was, um, you know, helping developers learn how do I monetize using my skills? There are different methods, you know, the ISP shopping actions came in, um, you know, so we're thinking about a, probably a learning series on monetization as well. Um, we, if I'm, if I'm, I'm also, we're also thinking about, uh, recently we launched this, um, you know, the feature about promoted, how do you promote your own skill using, you know, uh, yeah. Amazon ads, right? Um, so how do we, uh, now there's we're working on a training series on the promoted skills as well. So those are some of those things that's um, you know uh, that's our in our backlog, and we're constantly you know, working to get out to you. Cool, that's exciting. Lots to yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of the things in the pipeline. Um, I think Kabila here has been doing a fantastic job in you know to keeping up uh, to yeah. those training requests out there, uh, but it does take time and a lot of effort and uh, support from our product teams the subject matter experts and you in order to bring this team, you know, bring this courses out to life. Yeah, and, and Kabila, is it fair to say that you're writing most, if not all of the content? Correct. Um, I have a, a very good team of support though. I'm not doing this alone by, by no stretch of the imagination, but, but yes, um, it, it's been a, it's been a very enjoyable process um, bringing content to this community. Um, and again, by request, so as Santos has mentioned, with the, the items that we have coming out in the future, uh, slated for later on this year and 2024, I'll go ahead and put it on record, um, they're coming directly from the community. Yeah. So again, I mean, we cannot yeah. develop training or a learning path for like a one-off topic, right? Let's, let's be completely honest here. But if there is a, you know, a chorus or, you know, a certain, certain level of excitement or anticipation or ask about a certain topic like ISP, then we need to set our targets and move that in that direction. And we will. So keep the keep the uh, recommendations coming for the kind of curriculum, the content, also the format that you want, because we're trying to address or reach you in the style of learning that works best for you, right? So if that's a workshop, that's something we can work on. We have the self-service standalone um, ALL courses available to you. Um, and also, you know, if you prefer to learn in a video style, I know people like to watch things now and pause them, rewatch them, freeze frame. I do all that now um, myself. Uh, you, you're well. We can we can develop content in that 
in that form. So just let us know. Again, we're, we're always listening for it and very receptive to any feedback on existing content and also what you want to see. Awesome. Well, Santosh Kabila, I, I really appreciate you being here. I think that there's a lot of folks in the crowd that are really excited about the opportunities that are coming. Uh, and I think you're going to see a few new uh, learners in the Learning Lab for APL in the very near future. Um, Amanda, as always, thank you Thanks. for being here. It's always good Thanks. to have uh, the whole team here. So uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap things up today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will be here again Everybody. next week with Allison Atwell. Um, and before I do an official sign-off, Amanda, is there anything else that you wanted to say or cover off on? Um, no, I think, I think we are good. I want to thank everybody in the chat for your great questions as always. Um, and like, do check out ALL. They're doing tremendous work. Um, really want to know what you think of the courses that are there so far. Agreed. All right. Cool. Yep. We will see you all next week. Thank you so much for being here. And, uh, like I said, we'll see you next week, Tuesday, 9am Pacific noon Eastern. Bye-bye everybody. Bye everyone.